good to be in the house this morning. Amen. I believe King David said he was glad when he said it was church time. I'm paraphrasing a little bit. But it, he said, oh, I'm glad. Put that in me, God. I want to be glad Amen. in this church time. I want to see the significance and the importance of being connected to a church family Amen. and spending time in his word. Amen. He said, man shall not live by what? Bread alone. And the older I get, I'm learning something. Bread's not really all that good for me. <laughs> but he said, every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. That's what's good for you. Amen. It is good to be in the house. It's good to see y'all here this morning. And I say thank you for choosing to be here. Amen. We've done some swapping around today. That's good. Get out of that comfort zone. Amen. I get out of my comfort zone every time I preach. Still do. But God is good. God is faithful. Amen. I want to share something real quick before I get into this word just dropped in my spirit, but whoever it may apply. You don't need to be worrying about stuff. I said you don't need to be worrying about stuff. I find myself at time fighting through the week, worrying about this, worrying about that. And you know the bottom line is God's bigger. I said God is bigger Amen. than anything you can worry about. And it really is an indicator, and this is not to rub anybody wrong, because I got to rub myself right along with you. But when you realize how big your God is, your worries will get less and less and less. And I'm not saying things aren't real. I'm not saying something's not uh, looking you square in the face and it's a serious situation. But I'm here to tell you right now, our God is bigger than anything that can square off with you today, tomorrow, Amen. in the future. We, as far as all these things go, I'm telling you, it's paid in full. Yep. Paid in full. The cross of Calvary. What's the status on that? It's paid in full. You don't, don't worry about that. It's taken care of. It. Isn't that good to know from time Amen. to time? That, uh, oh, I still got this. Uh, you know, daylight's running out. What are we going to do about that? Oh, don't worry about that. We'll take care of that. Whew. You know, that's good in the natural. But I'm here to tell you in the spiritual this morning, whatever it is that's been coming against you and you found yourself worrying and fretting and all this other, quit worrying about that. Amen. God's bigger than that. Amen. Come on, church. Amen. He said, taste and see that he's good. Amen. Just give him a try. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, sometimes little children, you try to feed them and introduce them to things and you know you're like just try they won't even try and you're like I know when you open up your mouth and we get this in there there's going to a smile is going to come on your face but for whatever reason you won't even try this right now and that's what God is saying just try me just taste me just, just give this over into my hands and watch and see what I can do with things that seem impossible to you He's a good God. Are y'all with me? Yeah. i tell you what. I want to start in a very familiar passage. Not passage, but verse. John 3.16. Have y'all ever heard that before? That's a good one, isn't it? And I'm, I'm going to lead off into some uh, <coughs> gifts. Not, not, not gifts of the Holy Spirit, but gifts of Christ. Christ has given us gifts. He's done things for us. And I say this all the time, but I, and it just it's worthy of repeating. Everything he ever done was for our benefit. Amen. See, some people will give you a gift, but it, there, there may be a little catch to it. You know, it, there, there may be a little clause to it. But I'm telling you right now that everything that Jesus done for us in form of a gift was strictly for our 
benefit, to make you better, to equip you, to give you the necessary tools, the necessary empowerment to put you in a right relationship with your Heavenly Father. God has a plan for you here this morning that you be in a right relationship with Him. That's it. If I leave out of here, go through those doors this morning and I'm not right with God, it will simply be because I chose to do so. If I want to be right with God, I can do it this morning. I can get it under the blood this morning. I, I, can, I can leave out of here knowing that uh, I am clothed in the righteousness of God. I belong to Him. I'm on my way to heaven. My name's recorded in the last book of life. There's a place being prepared for me with many mansions. Everything's A-OK. -okay. If my life were to end today, uh, it is well, it is well with my soul. That's God's plan for you. If you don't walk in that, it's because that's what you desire. Y'all believe that? Amen. Well, I tried to get right and it just didn't work. Impossible. I said impossible. God does it. And it starts here in John 3, 16. It says there, Jesus was speaking. Jesus said these things. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Now for whatever reason there's those that feel like well God's against me. Huh? Oh I hope you don't see me today because I'll be a little grease pot on the highway. You know what people think like this? Oh, the church, the church is not for me. The church ought to be on board with everything that was just mentioned here. For God so loved the world. The church so loved the world. Amen. Didn't say anything there about putting a stamp of approval upon sinful uh, habits and lifestyles. But at the same time, we accept people just like they are. Jesus said, come just like you are. Come bring all that to me. Whatever you're involved in, you know. We, we, we hit so hard on certain things, and I'm not in agreement with it, but, you know, we come down so hard on uh, gay and lesbian uh, and, and all these other things, and, oh, you're just distinching the nostrils of God, but I'm going to tell you, uh, fornicating is fornicating. Uh, and you may be sneaking around with one of the opposite sex, and uh, it's still the same stench in his nostrils. Amen. Come on, church. Uh, and what I'm talking about is it's time for the church to get just like God, and then when people come in here, whatever they're carrying, whatever they're burdened down with, whatever uh, they're bound by, that we accept them just like they are and that we would introduce them to the good news of Jesus Christ and let them know that God loves them and they can be free and all they got to do is come and kneel down at an altar of prayer or wherever it may be, but they can find forgiveness, they can find redemption, and they can be a, a part of this great plan just like you are in a moment's notice, in a moment's time when they surrender themselves to God. Amen. Come on, church. We need to be right with Him. For God so loved the world. How's He feel about the world? I think I've run into church folks who hate the world. Ooh. Huh? Now there's things about this world I don't like. There's changes I've seen take place in this world that I don't like. That's, that's, that's not at all what I'm getting at. But when we start hating people, we don't get on the wrong side. Because that's not how God feels. There is a reason that Jesus Christ came and took on the form of a man, that he was God in the flesh, born through a virgin, you know, a woman, and, and, and something took place that's never happened ever since, that he lived a perfect, sinless life, that he sacrificed himself. All this was done so that we could receive salvation. There's no hate in that. I said there's no hate in that. God is love. Now there's a day of judgment coming, but we're not living in that right now. Oh, happy day, happy day. I don't want to be a part of that judgment. 
And there is a judgment coming. Don't get me wrong. And there comes a time when God said enough's enough. You know, I, I, I've reached out. I, you know, uh, I, I, I've done this. I, you know, uh, there's times in, in Israel's uh, past that, that you know there were times judgment would come upon them and they would find themselves being ruled by somebody that never was intended to rule them that never was his plan but because of their stiff neck rebellion uh, you know how they were and they wouldn't surrender to God and, and stay there these things would come upon them and there is a day coming church when there's going to be judgment fall come on but we're not in that day right now we live in a day of grace we live in a day of mercy. Today is the day of salvation. And, and we need to be the most forgiving, the most merciful, because we have revelation on, I'm walking in something, I'm driving something that, that I'm not worthy of. I've got something that I'm enjoying the benefits of that, that really, uh, I don't deserve this, but because of his love and because of his mercy, he gave it to me anyway. We ought to be the first ones to reach out and say, hey, this belongs to you too, because uh, God so loved the world. Amen. Are y'all with me? Yeah. He gave his son. I said he gave his son. Wow, that in itself. I mean, you know, I'm not into children sacrificing. That was practicing in the Old Testament. But the thought of giving up one of your children for the sake of the world would be a tough pill to swallow. Are y'all with me this morning? God done it. I said God done it. He gave his only. It's not like, you know, brother, you're blessed back here. You got a lot of children. You know, well, I got... You know, I could spare one. Even that would be painful. But it says only begotten son. Come on, church. He done it. Was it painful? Had to be. We're created in the image and likeness of him. And a lot of these things that we, you know, it says in scripture he's a jealous God. A lot of this stuff we have, you know, the, these these natural feelings. The Bible says be angry and sin not. There's times God gets angry. He just said you need to learn how to handle that. You can do that and you don't need to sin. You know, it goes on and on. But what I'm talking about is he felt the pain of losing his only begotten son. Giving him up. Giving him over. Y'all still with me? Goes on to say this gets into our part. We got to believe in Him. Huh? That don't sound too bad. Well, it goes on. Believe in Him. We got to believe in Him. We got to accept Him. We got to embrace Him. Fight. The good fight. Of faith. Once you lock in, once you experience redemption, once you confess your sins and you say, I'm no longer connected to you, Satan. I know at one time you had a right to me. I know at one time we were working together, but uh, praise the Lord, I saw the light. Y'all know what I'm talking about. And we come out. He then goes to work on us to discourage us to uh, get us to worry, to get us to come to this place where we would give up and not keep the faith. But it says if we believe in Him, if we believe in Him, we'll not perish, but we'll have everlasting life. Don't y'all want to go to heaven when you die? Yeah, I have to admit way back, that really caught my attention. And at a young age, I realized there's not a lot of choices here. I'm either going to go to a place called hell or I'm going to go to a place called heaven. It's really just that simple. When we draw our last breath, we really don't lose consciousness. You have a spirit man that will live through all eternity. You will live forever regardless. But it's where will it be? 
And along with hearing the gospel and knowing what I know about the word of God, I, I knew that if I make the wrong choice, I will go to this place of torment, this place of flame, this place where the, the worm dieth not, the fire is never quenched, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And I, I, I soon realized I don't want to go there. And that got my attention. And that woke me up. And, and I thought, you know what? Here's this other alternative. Embrace Jesus Christ. Put your faith in Him. Ask Him to come into your heart. Ask Him to forgive you for your sins. And He will do that for you. I believe that to be true. And you know when I done it, it wasn't just, uh, oh, I took care of that. No, something happened to me. I had a spiritual experience. Uh, I can remember when it happened and, and what I felt and what I sensed. I was not the same anymore. Jesus Christ came into my heart. He forgave me for my sins. He set me free from bondage and addiction. And I have never been the same. Oh, yeah, I've been up and I've been down. Uh, and there's been times people looked at me and said, you know, you really don't meet the, uh, what do you call it, criteria of a Christian. But I can say this, that all along the way, through my imperfections, through my faults, through my failures, I always believed in Him. I've never woke up since that day and, and come to a place where I said, I don't think Jesus is the Son of God. I don't think there's a God in heaven. I know Jesus is the Son of God. I know there's a God in heaven. And I know that because of the blood of the cross of Calvary, redemption is available to everybody. And whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, they will will be saved. That's good news. I said that's good news. Gifts. The gifts of Christ. We were all dead in our sins. Huh? You ever come upon something? Maybe women haven't, but you know men's out and about and uh, you kind, of, you kind of come upon something. Is that dead? You know, look, there's little animals and critters and different things. And sometimes the cave had to kick in too bad. And I found myself <laughs> giving a little kick, you know. Especially if you just kind of shot and thought, did I get him? I, I, that's been dead a while. <laughs> you didn't get that one. But we were dead. In sin. Nothing you do to change it. Oh, you, you, you pass some judgment on me. Oh, help me. I'm trying not to get sidetracked. But there's, there's some stuff in society. Like I said, I don't like it all. There's some stuff I'm getting sick of. You ever get sick of something? Let me tell you something. Dogs bark. You ever seen a dog bark? Don't they bark? Yeah. Chickens Club. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get it down here for a week. What's cows do? They move. Y'all with me? Yeah. But it seems like in the world we live in today, you say that's not a cow that don't move. You judge it. You judge it. <laughs> Seriously? Well, go ahead on. That ain't moving. And that hamburger won't be very tasty. Are y'all with me this yeah. morning? Yeah. And there's things that are the way they are because that is what God has set in motion. And there is something that happened there in the garden many, many years ago. He said, y'all be fruitful and multiply. Y'all can just enjoy yourself. He said, of this, leave it alone. Yeah. And they didn't do it. Mm -hmm. They had the power to do it. They, they, they didn't have to have that. They were not being deprived. They were not being neglected. They were not going to die of starvation. It, it, nothing, nothing like that. It was straight up rebellion. How come? Because they spent some time talking to the serpent. Uh, I'm here to help you this morning, church. We spend too much time talking to the enemy. We spend too much time rehearsing these thoughts that he puts in our head. He wants to give you this and he wants to tell you this. Here's what's going to happen to you. Here, you know, God doesn't love you. You know, God's depriving you and on and on and on. And the next thing you know, we're sitting there having more conversation with the enemy of our soul than we do with the Savior. Come on, church. And if you don't watch it, you're going to fall just like they fail. Right. Mm-hmm. 
But as a result, we were dead in sin. And we needed life. We needed life. You couldn't buy your way out. You couldn't do enough good deeds. You couldn't make enough sacrifices. Just on and on and on. How come? Because the enemy had you dead to rights. That's how it is. And we have to acknowledge that. I can't fix this. I can't change this. I mean, really and truly, if we look at it, we are so powerless within ourselves. Look how frail life is. You can wake up one morning and everything just be great. And before the sun sets, they will be preparing your funeral. Yes. I'm not preaching the doom and gloom, but I'm sharing the truth with you. Amen. Happens all the time. People begin a week and they have plans and they have vigor and, and, and they, they have energy and, and they have enthusiasm and they go out and they don't make it to the weekend. And they find themselves in the ground. That's how frail, that's how powerless we are within ourselves. Come on. I remember being out there and, and hearing the preaching of the word. And I thought, you know what, I'm young. I got time. I don't plan on going to hell. I'm going to make that decision one of these days. But I'm going to tell you, none of us knows about tomorrow. None of us knows exactly what's going to take place. The only good thing is we can have a relationship with God Amen. through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And before that ever takes place, we've got to come to this realization we were dead in our sins. Amen. Are y'all with me? Yeah. I'm not saying stay there. I'm not, I'm not saying amen, let's go home. I'm not leaving you there. But I'm saying we got to realize, ooh, I can't fix this one. I can't change this one. But he can. John 10.10, 10. would y'all turn there? We're going to go through a few verses. We're going to have to move a little quicker, quicker here this morning. Or we might turn it, sometimes they turn into two and three weeks. That's okay too, isn't it? Y'all heard all these verses this morning. Some, some, some Christians don't believe in the devil. Huh? Isn't that crazy, Leon? I first started preaching years ago. I got to preaching about demons. Y'all know Jesus cast out devils? Huh? Yep. Jesus cast out devils. I guess when Jesus died, they all left and went away. I don't think so. He said, these signs shall follow them that believe. They have cast out devils in Jesus' name. Still going. It should still be common practice that the church house and the church folks through the course of their week or month or year, huh? Yeah. That we occasionally would run into one of these little demonic spirits. And we cast them out in Jesus' name. Amen. But that probably make the news and you'd be a nutcase. Because it's so rare. Why is that? Well, the only thing I see, he said, these signs shall follow them who? They believe. When the believing quits, the casting out's going to quit. I about jumped over something. It just kind of hit me. I said, when the believing quits, all is under quit. Yep. They lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Well, why that quit? Well, we don't believe in the with old. There's churches here. We don't believe in that anointment with old, praying for the sick. Now, we might take them in the back room there and do it in private. Why is that? What, what's changed? Yep. The believing part. Yep. Yeah. And then we get it down to salvation. And that's important. I'm not taking away that's important. But we keep watering this down. Yeah. And here's what it turns into. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. He said from such...
Turn away. Yep. And there's stuff going on uh, in the name of the Lord this morning. There's some beautiful facilities. There's some beautiful buildings. Uh, and here's what he's probably got to say about it. From such a turn away. Uh, when you sit through a church service and there's not been an invitation given to accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, there's something sad to like. Amen. Y'all still with me? Yes. Alright. John 10.10. 10. There is a devil, by the way. That's what got all that started with. There is a devil. And there is little demon helpers. They're called fallen angels. There was a day when Lucifer failed. And how he done it, uh, you know, his influence, he, he has a, a an amount of power. The prince and the power of the air, the Bible says. Uh, he, he has authority. He has, you know, certain dominion. Uh, as a matter of fact, when we don't have Jesus in our life, he controls us, you know. I mean, let's just get real about it. But about a third of those angelic beings decided to go with him. And that's where you get hell and their forces. And they are real. And the Bible says we're not to be ignorant of his devices. In other words, we should know our enemy. And we should recognize our enemy. And there should be times in our life where we say, well, this is just an attack from hell. Instead of being all confused. Oh, I'm so confused, God. Why are you doing this to me? God didn't do that to you. That's hell attacking you. And God said, I give you the keys to the kingdom. Uh, you know, there comes a time, church, where we need to grow up a little bit spiritually and not, not have to depend upon our doctrine to be changed, spiritually speaking, and that we would come to this place where we would take on the anointing of God that He has for us and that we would take the keys to the kingdom that He has for us and that we would put Satan under our feet and begin to do spiritual warfare because He has empowered us. Y'all still with me? Amen. Let's read the verse. The thief. That's what he is. He is a thief. You ever notice that when, when someone gets labeled as a thief, they enter the room. You put your hand on the bill. I'm not a city person, but you know when you hear, oh, they got them pickpockets and they'll, they'll get your billfold out, Leon, and you won't even know it. And when I get to sit in a big crowd, I'm constantly touching my billboard. Somehow that stuck with me. They said that reaching your front pocket and have your car keys on me. Really? But when someone gets labeled as a thief, you'll keep your eye on them. You'll watch them. If, if there was such a thing as a neighborhood thief, and, and, and you see them walk by your house, you're thinking, oh my, they're looking stuff over. They're going to come back tonight. You know, it just... But do you know that most Christians don't give the thief of their soul any? What are you talking about here? I'm trying to look for the right word. We just let it go. We just let it go. All oh, what will be will be. If the front kicks in the front door tonight and just carries everything out, I, I guess it was just meant to be. No. That's right. He is a thief. And he does come, the Bible says right there, to kill, to steal, and to destroy. Don't expect anything different from him. Oh, I think, I think the devil's got converted. That'd be a lie from hell. Seriously. He's not going to change. He has chosen his destiny. And that's where he will be. But we're getting a description here of the enemy. He's a thief. And he comes not but for to kill, to steal, and to destroy. Guess what? When you got destruction going on in your life, when you got killing going on in your life, when you got stealing going on in your life, you need never look at the Heavenly Father and say, What are you doing to me? Well, why are you doing this to me? He's not the one doing that. Uh, the Bible goes so far as to say this. Uh, God cannot be tempted. Uh, God cannot give over to darkness. It's not in His nature. Uh, the source of that, the source of sickness, is from Satan himself. Amen. 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 
People mad at God. What are we mad at God for? The enemy has done these things. The enemy is why we're dead in sin. The enemy is why we need forgiveness, redemption. And we got to realize, you got to know the source, church. It, 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 it heads off confusion. Are y'all with me? Look at here, Jesus. He said, I am come. Jesus says, why he come? I'm coming. I'll tell you why I'm here. You ever, you know, when, when someone comes up, you like not to know why they're there. What, what, what's this about, you know? What's going on? And Jesus said, here's what you're dealing with. There's some stuff set in motion. And all he's going to do is wreak havoc upon your life, in this life, and in the life to come. And you don't want to remain with him. You're connected to him. He has a right to you. You fail. You made that decision. But he said, I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. In other words, you're dead. You don't know it yet. There's many people who are just walking dead, folks. Really, they're just going through the motion. They've been doing it for a long time. And they're just walking dead, folks. They don't have God in their life. Oh, I'm a good person. I'm not talking about a good person. I'm talking about a saved person. I'm not talking about a perfect person. I'm talking about somebody who's made Jesus their choice. Who's put their faith in Christ. Uh, he's not going to ask you how you paid your bills. He's not going to ask you about this and about that. He, it's going to be about what you do with my son. What you do with that plan that was made available to you. And I'm here to tell you, church, when you accept him, there will be a change in your life. Because the Bible says, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Amen. Me and, my, me, me and my wife aren't scheming on loopholes here what we can get away with. Mm -hmm. huh? I'm looking to get away from darkness Amen. and get into His light. Because yeah. I'm changed. Because I'm a new creature. Because I'm in Christ. But He said, there's a reason I came. You can come out of death. He said that they might have life and have it more abundantly. There's living. You remember going to the promised land and, 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 and they were in the land of just enough. Are y'all with me? They said their clothes didn't wear out, their shoes didn't wear out. He said, y'all go out there and get enough for today. Some of them got greedy and they had maggots in their stuff the next day. Oh, that's a different sermon. That's some greedy church folks. Y'all still got to love me. I'm preaching the truth. He said, get you just enough for today. And I'm going to make this stuff, you know. But I'm going to tell you something about God. He said, I'm going to give you life. And I'm going to give it to you more abundantly. Amen. And what I'm talking about is he'll bring you into that land flowing with milk and honey. He'll bring you into that land after you uh, bless that two-piece fish dinner. They're going to collect more scraps and baskets later than you ever started with, Leon. Yeah. That's the God we serve. Amen. But we got to believe that. What happened to the miracles? I think they quit believing. What happened to the signs? I think they quit believing. Come on, church. He gives life to the dead. That's the only thing we're going to get through today. We'll finish this next week, though. If the rapture don't take place, I'm going to be here next week. Amen? I'm not in a hurry. This is about, this is about getting what we got for today. And we're going to get enough today that will be more than enough. But we're going to leave out of here knowing this. The dead don't have to stay there. The spiritually dead don't have to stay there. You can be alive. You can receive his life and receive it more abundantly. God wants to bless you this morning. There's a reason he said I'll cause you to be the head, not the tail. Oh, I'm just so glad to be alive. I'll, I'll just find my place back here. Quit that. He said, I'll cause you to be the head and not the tail. Above only and not beneath. Amen. Amen. You, you know, these, these shy folks get pushed to the back. But there's a reason that some of them others get on, in the front of the line. Uh, you know, you ever, you ever go out to eat at the church and you get in one of these big 
Chinese buffet. That, that's not the place for a polite person when they get old. You got to get in there. You, you want me on ice? You might eat in about two hours. I come here to eat. I come here to receive. Hallelujah. Y'all remember that woman who pressed through the crowd with the issue of blood? I don't think she was on ice. I think she was like, excuse me. I got to get in here. This is my time. This is my opportunity. I don't think she was like, oh, y'all just, no, no. She said, I, enough's enough, devil. And I'm not going to spend another day with this. Uh, and I've tried all this other and it's not working. But I know one thing, if I could just touch the hem of his garment, I'm going to be made whole today. And there's some of us in here, we got to rise up and say, this is my day and I'm going to get in there and I'm going to touch and I'm going to receive because I'm believing that God cannot fail and that he has a plan for my life. Y'all got to be with me. How we, how we get this life? You got to hear his voice. He said, Behold, I stand as the door and knock. Y'all ever read that verse? Yeah. If you open up, he said, I'll come in. I'll sup with you. God has a voice. You know, nowadays you say, God spoke to me yesterday. Doo doo, coo coo. It shouldn't be like that in the church. You know, I can see a little bit of the world, but we ought to be like, man, you know, Gaylin, you talk about in your prayer life, which I said, hey, good work, brother. I believe you. But this way, Gaylin, thanks God, talk to him. What happened to get that far off track? God speaks to his people. Amen. And the way we, we receive life is we hear. The voice of God. He said, many are called. Have you ever had anybody call you? I mean, if you, if you, if you make any sense of the call, you have to hear a voice. It's me on the other end, but I'm just going to do a moment of silence. Now that's crazy. If you call me, I'm looking for you to say something. Hello. Hello. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Yes. Amen. And God speaks to his people. Right there in, in that chapter 10 of John. Jump up to 27. I'm almost done. <coughs> right here. John 10, 27. Jesus said, My sheep 